Here come the Vikings now as they get set on first down and 10. They go play action here on first down. He's going to launch this thing. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs, 30 yards. And the Vikings are going to take the lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Four bath out to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now back out comes the offense. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. A very solid gain of 27. On first and 10, Locke. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Fitzgerald. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Back now in Los Angeles. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. From the gun, here's Locke. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. On second down, here's Locke. That is caught at the seven. And he will take it in for the touchdown. T.Y. Hilton from 19 yards away. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Out of the gun, Luck forced out to his left. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. They didn't want the tie. They roll the dice and they take the lead. That felt like a tone setter, didn't it? Forget tying the ball game and feeling like we're just hanging with you. We're going to go ahead and push it to a one-point lead, and that just changes the complexion of the whole game. This will be fielded at the six. And he's got Rome. And now nothing but green ahead of him. Touchdown, Vikings. Jarek McCannis, four yards and the Vikings have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion they'll try to run with Murray and he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage back at the six so the defense gets the stop I know it's situation to situation but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, give up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Flush to his right. They'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. To throw on second down is Locke. This will be caught at about the five. And he's into the end zone for the receiving touchdown. 
Giovanni Bernard. He scored on the ground and through the air. And his guys have taken the lead here in the fourth. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about it. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Picked off by DJ Swearinger. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown, and pick it off, just as we saw there. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. And he is knocked down from the side. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Daniil Hunter in there to take him down and to take us to the two-minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They've got it second and goal now as they look for that final dagger. Throwing his lock. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. You can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Gano out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And some space here. And it'll be a terrific return here as he gets it down all the way inside the 30. There's no downplaying that we all knew that this was a critical possession. And to get a return like that to start things off, that's the spark that they needed. That's the spark they were looking for. Here's Bradford. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. Ezekiel Ansah in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. Bradford. He's got Floyd on left. And he's going to go out of bounds. He takes this one down shy of the 20. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. My well, man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, it really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. And Forbath will put this one through. 
And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the field goal got him back within one score, and now the focus lies on this onside kick. And the hands team does its job. They're able to secure it. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Luck going to throw it. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Daniil Hunter in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Follow me on social media. And once again, thanks for watching.